Hi, uh, welcome back. This is our second our second interview towards the book The Mind, which is, it is part of the celebration we have here in Malaysia towards the World Philosophical Day 2019, sponsored by the Malaysian brand of the World Philosophical Forum. Here with us is Dr. Hakim. He's one of the author of the book, and he will share with us an interview, understanding better the paper he has written called A Neglected Philosophy in Religious Life, which is part of the book. So welcome, Professor, to, for joining us into this interview. Thank you for your time. I hope you. You, you can enlighten us about yes, this interesting topic for me. So the first question I have, please give us a, a short explanation. Where, from what, since when you are developing this idea and what caught your attention to do this? To do this? Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> Uh, actually, uh, uh, first of all, uh, before I uh, explain how the idea come into myself, actually it's uh, a very long process. Uh, well, uh, look back to my background. Actually, I'm uh, from the National Scientific University. I learned there on political science. And then I further my studies uh, at the Center for Civilizational Dialogue with Prof. Uh, uh, Chandra Muzaffa and all the uh, professors there and after that I'm doing uh, sociology and social anthropology where I'm studying the Christians community at Sabah. Before they become Christians they are actually believe in enemies. So I, what I learned is actually uh, religions is a uh, way of life which can bring people to the uh, harmonious world. So meaning to say that if you say that you are a religious person, so you must bring peace and harmony to the world, to the people, to yourself, to your neighbors. Because everything comes from religion is very good. Yeah. But what you see now is, uh, is actually uh, something which is contradict to the religion's philosophy, I think. Where people nowadays is not, uh, not concerned about it. So through my experience, let's say, uh, especially during my studies on uh, Murtaha community in Sabah, uh, it is a quite long study where I stay with them from 2005 until 2011. It's about uh, some years there. Uh, I went there for, let's say, for one week and then I go back. I went there for another two weeks and then I go back. So I stay at the, at the community, in the community, uh, go to the church with them, try to understand their belief, try to understand their, their religions their way of life, their thinking. So I can come to the conclusion that actually a uh, human being who are really uh, believe in religions become religious person. So they have, they must have the kinds of uh, peace and harmony in himself. And you can see the uh, Peace and harmony goes out from this, him, himself to the neighbors, to the nations, to the world. It is impossible if you said that uh, you are a religious person, you, are, you have peace and harmony in yourself, but your actions, your ethics is different from what you believe. So that's why I come to the idea to write about uh, religions, Actually, religions without philosophy that I can see here in, in many places, uh, including in my country, where you say that we are uh, a community with religions, we believe in religion. Even if you come to our country, among the uh, first list that you will ask you is what is your religion? Showing that religion is very important identity. 
But why you cannot see uh, peace and harmony uh, in some places? Uh, so people tend to use uh, religions as a tool uh, to hate other people, mm. which is contradict to the uh, philosophy of the religion itself. Mm. Yeah, actually, in, in, in your paper, <coughs> you say about <coughs> normally practitioners of the religion focus on the rituals, and yeah. the rituals of the religion and the philosophy of the religion are completely different. So you say in your paper that the philosophy of religions mostly are the man's realization into, you say, into prosperity and joy. How did you get into that conclusion that that is the philosophy of religion? So what does this mean? Uh, actually, <coughs> uh, actually, we hope that the more religions that person, it will bring more joy, uh, more peace and harmony in the community. But it is not happened. Uh, so from my study, I, I found that uh, Through my uh, study, saying uh, that person more focus yeah, when they more focus on do and don'ts in religions, without understanding where is the roots of do and don'ts, what is the roots of uh, all the uh, regulation, for example, all the roots of uh, how to do things, the ethics. So they pretend to do something. Uh, that they, they feel that this is good for them, that will bring them to the peace and harmony not only in the world but hereafter. But how about their daily life? Are they really embrace uh, the philosophy of religions that to bring uh, peace and harmony? For example, uh, Islam as a religion. Yeah? So it will bring uh, peace and harmony to the entire world. Rahmatan lil alamin means what? Means when that people is a religious person and really understand religions, practicing religions, so we will have a very uh, good uh, conditions with the peace and harmony everywhere. But it is not happen. Even uh, if you look at the uh, Muslim world, for example, sorry to say that they have a very uh, uh, serious quarrel and then they uh, engage uh, war with each other and they claim that they are very religious person. Mm. So it is really contradict to the philosophy of religion. Religion is not ask you for war. Religion asks you to have a very good life together. So no matter what is what is your belief, yeah, we have to respect each other. Mm. Yeah, this, you can see this is among Muslim. How about a Muslim and the uh, other religions, cross uh, religions and then cross sects? So it is very important to understand that actually we have to uh, to understand the roots of the religion first, and then uh, after you understand that, you go, do your ritual to have uh, what you call it a, a, a peace and harmony in yourself. So you can you can uh, be a better uh, for for Muslim to be a better Muslim. So the you can see the benefit of religions is not only for you as individual but also for the others. So but if you said that the religion is good for you and not for others, uh, I, I I doubt that this person is really understand what is mm. religions all about. Yeah, I agree with you. Actually, yeah. <clears throat> but what you say about prosperity uh, in the context of the philosophy of the religion, what what the, does that word actually means in the context of the philosophy of the religion? What do I mean uh, with that? Is actually uh, uh, religions uh, bring you to to have a good life, uh, no matter what is your background. What, where you come from, what is your skin color, what is your belief. You must go together 
because you are sharing one world. There is no other choice unless, uh, except to have a very good, uh, very good life together. I believe that if you want to, to be happy, you must make others happy as well. Because your happiness will come to me and my happiness will come to you, will go to you. And all this happiness, when it mixed together, so then we can have a very good uh, world to live. Yeah, of course, this is, uh, this is quite, uh, quite maybe difficult, but this is, I think this is our job there. So, intolerance between religions is evident as a source of conflicts within mankind. And you say in your paper that the reason of why is this happening? Do you think, do you believe that somehow, some way in the future, this can end? Okay, thank you for that. Uh, this is actually very tough questions to, uh, <laughs> to be answered. You know, uh, religious intolerance is, uh, is a long history, right? Mm. Uh, but we have no other choice rather than we, we have to make correction on that. You know, uh, we are working at our side to bring peace and harmony. And the other side also doing the same thing, but of course, contrary to what we want to do. So I'm, uh, with this opportunity, trying to actually to promote uh, religions harmony, not only inter-religions, but also intra-religions. Where I think uh, uh, this problem uh, actually will uh, become worse if we are not working uh, to do something like to promote dialogue, like to promote understanding among all those, uh, all the uh, world populations. So, uh, of course, uh, it is not me to say that whether uh, this thing will will be end or not. But this is, I believe, it is our job. This is our responsibility not only uh, as an educator like me, but everybody. What more for the uh, uh, people who are involved as, uh, in, in, really, in religions as, uh, as uh, what we call it, as a religious person, as a, a head of the community. So actually, uh, everybody must uh, work together. Uh, I believe that uh, in Malaysia, for example, uh, everybody must embrace religious tolerance. Even in Al Quran, say that we have no choice; we have to agree and disagree. Yeah? Agree and disagree is actually one of the uh, uh, actually the way uh, how we can solve this. You can expect that everybody have a same mind. Yeah. Uh, even the twins also have a different thinking. Yeah. So for me, religions is uh, exclusively for that particular individuals. You cannot impose your belief to others. Mm. It is wrong if you want to impose your belief to others, and it will not work. Mm. But if you try to do so. You, it will create uh, religious disharmony. It will create religious intolerance. And uh, we should stop this. We should stop this. Uh, there's no way others to say that you must believe in this. You cannot believe in that. That's not the way. If you are trying to share the wisdom of your religions, please have a very good dialogue and discussions. Not just to uh, ask and force people to believe what you believe. You cannot force people to believe what you believe and the others also cannot force their belief to you. So if we understand this, so I think we can have a more uh, a good place for everybody to live.
so we must respect each other so that is my point of course uh, i cannot say or predict whether this religious disharmony will end or not but i believe that this is our responsibility we must do it continuously until the end of our life actually so and you must pass the the uh, message uh, to the younger generations yeah so this is the reality we are sharing the one world mm. no matter where you are come from or is your religion or is your race your uh, skin color yeah so yeah. we are actually must uh, must create a very uh, very good relationship among us and last question because we need to leave for the people who are watching the interview you say in your paper that normally these terrorist acts that it can be seen worldwide leaders of religions normally don't say anything about it so this can be seen as a way to promote those actions so it's really at least for people like us that live in the western side of the world you know we see like this is something that is not good for us to be surrounded by by at least Muslims. You know, it's, it's a kind of too difficult, difficult for us to understand how can we be in harmony with them or with you. So into this context, um, what do you think when, for example, this type of event, like the World Philosophy Day, here in Malaysia is being addressed by the Muslim, the Islam leaders, for example. What do they tell you? All right. <clears throat> Actually, uh, at the first place, we must support this. And this is, is in line with religious teaching. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, we, must, uh, we must understand uh, that actually uh, uh, promoting uh, peace and harmony uh, must be done for uh, forever. Yeah. So this kind of events is uh, for me is very very important uh, to save the world civilizations. Yeah. To save the world civilization. Nowadays you can see uh, that. Uh, people do not tell the truth yeah the truth is not there because everybody talk on behalf of their community we are actually have to move on that we we must become a speaker for everybody not only for your community and your interests you must you must uh, honest to yourself that everybody uh, as a human being as humankind you need uh, something in your life you need something in your life, I need something in my life uh, in every aspect, education for example, yeah, uh, economic sector for example, so we work together. Yeah? You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, just push your community and you left the other side. And the others also have, must have the same uh, kind of thinking to look to their brothers and sisters. Yeah? Uh, what they need, what, what, what are their problems. So we must help each other to solve our problem. So this, this kind of, of thing that actually we, we, we have to promote and this event uh, is one of them. Uh, the first time when, when I look at this event, so actually I'm very excited to join because I think uh, I can contribute. Uh, you know, I've stayed with the Christian community for a long time and they are be just for me becomes my, my, my brothers and sisters. So when I vi visit them, yeah, they just treat me as their brother. They give me everything. Yeah? I try to understand them and they try to understand me. And lastly, we become uh, very, uh, very close, just like a blood brother. Thank you, again. Well, thank you very much for being here with us in this interview. Please don't miss the other interviews we have with the authors of the book, The Mind 
of the World Philosophy, uh, World Philosophy Day 2019, sponsored by the Malaysian branch of the World Philosophy Forum. Thank you, Dr. Hakim, for Thank your you awesome so much. Take the time to answer these questions. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you.